This is a quick overview video of the Jammer RGB Pi Jammer adapter board. Um, when I saw this on Twitter, I thought it looked interesting, so I put an order in straight away. This came a couple of days ago. Um, so you know, idea of the sort of build quality of it. This PCB is nicely manufactured. Uh, it's nice uh, screening and stuff on there. There is a. It doesn't come with a with this heatsink. You have to supply that yourself. That's for the the uh, audio amplifier. Um, must get a little bit hot. There's a pad on the other side, and you can just uh, stick it there. It's a little volume control next door to it. Um, so your standard, standard jammer adapter. Although you'll probably notice that it's backwards. Um, so you have to run it upside down. That's not really a problem. And I guess that's because the power on a Pi gets generated um, from that side of the GPIO. So it's just easier for them to route power directly there to those pins, rather than have to either run the traces the other side or somehow trying to design it that way, but then have to lift it up off the pie and yeah, you can see what they've done that way and it's, it's not a huge problem. They actually provide a little shim for the jammer adapter as well, a plastic shim that you can stick into your jammer adapter and that stops it from stops you from plugging it in the wrong way around. Uh, and it's, also, it's also got power written in there, written on that side and whiteness as well, so it gives you a bit of a warning. Um, there's some little breakouts here to add, you can add extra inputs if you like. This damn thing will focus. There we go. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So yeah, play one button nine, play one button ten. Wow. Who needs that many buttons on their cab? There's a five volt and a three point three volt on the ground breakout as well. Should you need? I don't know where you'd need that. Perhaps. I'm not sure. Handy to have though. If you do need to run any extra bits and bobs in your cab, um, you can always draw some some voltage off there. Uh, onto the back of the board. See, there's a yeah, audio, basic audio amplifier there, stereo with a volume control. It's got a couple of those two chips there are to expand, just to expand the GPIO for controls. There's a little throw switch right next to it. That's you can switch between stereo and mono. I think it's stereo is for MVS jammer configuration. A um, couple of caps, this is a power area here. And then across the bottom, you can see there are lots of resistors. That's the, the standard GERT 666 resistor ladder. This uses a slightly different layout because it's pulling audio from pin nine and 10. Um, so in terms of the configuration of the Pi, it doesn't really make much difference. There's just a, a different, uh, a slightly different overlay file you need to use in your config TXT file. That's all provided by the pre-built software that you get. Um, there's a download link on the RGB Pi site it's the same image that they use for their SCART adapter as for the jammer adapter. You must auto, auto detect what kind you've got plugged in and then just changes the interface to, to, to match that. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the board itself, not a lot more to say. It's, the size is, as you can see, it's teeny tiny. I mean, it's absolutely minute, which is great. Um, the one thing, the one omission I can see on here is some kind of video amplifier. I'm not sure what's going on here at these, with these two chips at the end. Oh, goodness me. I've got to... I presume they're to do with the power, though, more than anything. So, uh, But the image it produces is nice and clean and crisp um, and bright. So I don't know how they're doing that. Whether that's just the, the length of the, the traces going from the video, um, the inputs on the, on the jammer edge to the pipe, I don't know. But... Um, it's certainly brighter than a pint of jammer board, that's for sure. Right, so let's give it a bit of a test. So we're running it on a, a Pi 3B Plus. Um, pretty standard. I've, got, I've already written, I've already burnt the, um, the software image to the SD card. And I've also downloaded uh, some advanced main ROMs and loaded them onto the card. That process itself is pretty, it's similar. If you're used to using like RetroPie, it's pretty much exactly the same. Okay, so. That's on properly. Let's close that down. Let's check both sides. No missing pins. Everything looks good. Yep, yeah, looks fine. Right, okay, so it's obviously remember to run it this way around. Um, it does sit quite nicely on its on its on its back anyway, because it's sort of the board and the uh, the USB are sort of lined up that way anyway. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna pause it now, um, plug it in, and then show you how it runs. Okay. So there we go. Oops, run away. All plugged in, ready to go. I get some power. 
would help if I switch it on the wall. video that plays. Well, you can see from that, the, vid the video output is, is really nice and bright. Sounds good and crisp and clear. It's no, I can't hear any interference on the, um, coming from the speaker. This is what you, you greeted with when you boot it up. Um, now when you, when, when you first switch it on there's a couple of steps you've got to go through. You have to tell it what kind of controls you're using uh, and then just set up your buttons and your directions and all that kind of stuff. That's dead simple. Um, then it takes you through to a little screen resolution, uh, screen adjustment tool which is quite good. And then you can probably get to that through the display and then image adjustment. So in here this screen you can you can actually position your screen so this is changing sort of um, front porch and back porch settings and overscan settings to make your screen larger and smaller and then you can actually make it wider and more narrow which for this monitor is great because as with most Dynakey monitors my horizontal adjustments a bit a little bit knackered so um, so if we come out there okay um, System speed, that's that's for consoles only, that's 50 or 60 hertz. Um, normal or arcade, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if that takes us through to a, a more cut down menu. Okay, we'll try that. Screen saver, not to bother 10 minutes is fine. Button style, obviously if you're using a, a, uh, a controller. So go back a screen, I wonder if this will, yes, it does. So rather than having all the menus across the top, that takes you straight into uh, is the arcade menu. That's handy. Okay, so um, pretty basic. I mean, this is emulation station running at the front. And you probably recognise it by um, where all the little icons are and things stuff. Um, showing the, the images in the background. Those were downloaded along with a pack that I downloaded from. Um, there's a torrent you can get that has, it's like, I think it's probably a 32 gig card image that's got every ROM under the sun but you can just you can bring your own it's no problem if you set it up on the uh, on the Wi-Fi network you can transfer your ROMs across the Wi-Fi just like the DIY image does uh, let's just pick on ghouls and ghosts because it's a game I know well ghouls and ghosts okay and this screen always comes up it just reminds you about the hotkeys so the hotkey comma to exit is you hold down start and press B just button two. Uh, and there we go, I mean. I say the image is nice and bright and clear. Um, the picture is, I mean, it's exactly the same as the DIY image. So it's, it's running um, advanced main with the correct um, resolution and correct refresh rates. Um, so not doing anything particularly new in that respect. I mean, there's been a couple of obviously a couple of different projects running the past few years. There's um there's been the UK VAC DIY one. There's the um, there's the Arpicade distribution which comes out from Australia, uh, and there's the Python Jammer, and now there's these guys uh, who previously have just um, had a SCART adapter product that, that plugs directly onto the GPIO. Um, this is a new venture from them, uh, and to be honest, I'm really, really impressed with it. Uh, I've got, I don't think there's any complaints I could make, other than maybe it'd be nice to be able to customise the front end, um, and have a bit more more flexibility around that, but really, it's for the price, which is 52 euros delivered, um, it's a nice, neat little package. Uh, I, I haven't detected any kind of problems with, um, with the video or the audio output. Um, it's, it is pretty much plug and play. Um, you can't really complain about that, I don't think. Um, let's just try up another game. Just to... See, all, the, all these are, are horizontal games because running over a GERT, you can't do interlaced images. So you, you wouldn't be able to do vertical games on a horizontal monitor in interlaced, but um, a lot of people like to rotate anyway. So 
Um, you just have a different, a, a different ROM pack, a vertical ROM pack, and when you rotate the screen orientation, you can uh, you can load those ROMs instead. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, it's great. It's got the usual problems with filling a CRT. Yeah. It's great. And I think for someone who's never never had one of these sort of Pi Jammer systems before, this is a great choice, I think. Um, it's cheaper than the Pi to Jammer, but it does pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, I think in time we'll definitely be able to adapt this for the DIY image. The, the only challenge that really is around the controls. And I don't think it's going to be going to be a major one really. There was, there's only a few different control system, control mapping systems that they're going to be using. So uh, yeah, once you crack that, we can be able to port um, pretty much anything onto this hardware, which is great. Um, the, obviously, there, there are a few things that the DIY build has over this, um, which is things like. Um, Obviously having a JPEG, you've got video protection. So if you change any configuration settings in your config text file, if you change the resolution, you boot it back up again into 15K monitor, you're gonna, you're gonna frustle your monitor potentially. Um, and likewise, if you put, you know, if you've, if you've taken the SD card, you put the wrong one back in again without thinking, you plug it in and um, you don't have that protection there. Um, the other thing is um, with a DIY image, the, uh, with, with the DIY solution. The GPIO is still available, so you can map things like the analog zero in and actually add analog controls into your Pi as well. So with this, obviously, you've, you've already used the GPIO, you'll be able to do that. You'd have to come up with some other solution, probably using a, a UHID or a, um, an APAC or something into the USB instead. Um, not a huge issue, but it's just more expense that you don't really need. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty impressed with this. I like it a lot. Um, I've not played with it extensively yet but um yeah first impressions are really really good very very polished indeed um yeah any questions uh, fire me a message um i hope you enjoyed that thank you